So my name is Pekka Sarkola, I'm coming from Gispo, and, and I want to give you some kind of idea how to build an enterprise GIS with FOS4G softwares. Uh, it's my experience and our experience from various customers in last 10 years or something that we have been in business. So the Gispo is company established in 2012, now we are 25 plus people, we consult, we develop, we train, uh, our uh, users, our customers, and we support. We also like to be a good OSGO or FOS4G citizenship, so, so we also uh, support and, and with money and resources uh, the software development. But how about the enterprise GIS? Um, it's not only marketing term. You, you hear that quite often that uh, people want to sell you or you want to buy or, or some kind, somebody's consulting, but it's not only marketing term. I think it's very useful when you need to communicate uh, your general ICT people. You have ICT department and usually they want to separate the GIS people in separate room or, or house or, or somewhere because it's, they don't understand what is the GIS. But that enterprise GIS gives you more uh, vision or, or how to do the, the GIS in the enterprise level. And of, of course, the head of organizations, they understand better than when you talk about the enterprise kind of systems. When you need to, to be bigger than you are, it's good to have a, some kind of vocabulary to the terms that understand it, that how to do bigger systems. It's not a product or a service. It's, it's, it's a way to uh, manage the GIS geospatial information in your organization. So first thing I steal from the Wikipedia, what is the enterprise software and what is the enterprise architecture or enterprise system. So idea is that it satisfies the needs of the organization, not individual user. So you have to think about the organization all the time, not the individual users. So my uh, uh, definition for enterprise GIS is that it's an uh, organization wide of collection of the softwares to manage the geospatial information and, and, and process the geospatial information. It's not one desktop. And it, if, if one person is leaving, the process won't stop. Uh, it's focusing on the organization processes more than projects. So processes are going for all the time. Projects are like starting and ending and stopping and that's it. But the processes are always there whenever the, the organization exists. So basic architecture is very simple. You have a data storage layer then you have application server layer, and then you have user interface. Nothing new in, in there. Maybe some idea is that API, they could be in, in several levels. All, all, not only in the uh, application server layer, but also in the data storage layer. So how to build enterprise GIS? You have to start with the principles of enterprise architecture. And one step is to check that what is your ICT people saying about the enterprise architecture. If, if the organization have our enterprise architecture, you have to follow that. If not, you have a problem. Whatever, you have always a little bit challenge because you have to understand how they see it, the enterprise architecture. If you are a GIS person, you go in a new field, and you have the understanding that it will be something that you have to learn. Um, and sometimes GIS people have to show the path. Sometimes organizations don't have an enterprise architecture when you start to build an enterprise GIS, and then you have a, a challenges, because you have to understand in the better way how they do this. It's very complex uh, concept, and it's not technology design tool, it's more like communication tool, uh, discussion tool between business owners and IT people. 
Uh, there's some tools where you can use to build up, but you see that in the in in here, in the right side, you see that CFO, the chief financial stake uh, officer, somebody who's taking about the finance uh, of the organization, he has a problem or ideas, drivers, and goals, but he had to fulfill. And it goes, the requirements goes in the organization from the top to down. Usually we are concentrating the low level. We are building the software, we are buying the hardware, and we are doing this kind of technology thing. But the managers don't, don't understand what you need. If you need the server, they don't understand why you need the server. You have to see their drivers and goals, and fulfill their drivers and goals, you need the server or something else. Where to start? Uh, I think the first thing is to describe the processes. You have to describe the processes, how the organization is working, how your geospatial information is maintained and uh, delivered or shared or something like that. And you have to find the process owners and actors. If you, if you don't have an owner of the process, you, you, you don't know who is responsible and who will be funding the, the, the services or servers or the uh, project developments. Uh, after describing the processes, you have to figure out is, are they good enough, if there is some kind of way to, to make it more simple, or, or, or streamlining the processes, and, and usually people who are part of the processes understand it, why we are doing this, because it just takes more time and so on. Who will be then describe the processes? You can do it by yourself as an as actor in, 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 in uh, organization, but you have a problems because you understand too much may be sometimes the problem, or you are part of the problem. Consultant is also very good if you're outsider. You can see, you don't understand all the details what the, what's going on there, but fire is a good farmhand, but the bad master. Same things goes to the consults. Data architecture is an uh, important thing, and, and you, you need to define and document the conceptual data model, logical data model, and physical data model. But very important in the, in the GIS, and uh, my feeling is, and my experience is that the, uh, GIS is maybe the only field in ICT that you need some kind of external data sets always. I haven't seen any customer who is not using external data sets from the organization. Because it's too expensive to, for example, collect your own road network or, or topographic database or aerial imagery or satellite imagery. You always use somebody else's data sets in your organization when you manage the geospatial information. Uh, you have to figure out who is, how you use the external data sets, APIs, or you, are you downloading the data, or whatever you want to do it. One important thing is to also uh, understanding the data ownership. Who is the owner of the data? If you haven't described that in your organization, uh, you have also the difficulties to understand who maintained the data and how if you want to open the data, who, is, who will make the decision about the opening the data? Data ownership is all important, but also the ownership of the data model is important. If you purchase a, some kind of software, where is the data model who is made by a vendor, and you want to make changes on the data model, what is your responsibilities or what are your rights uh, to, to correct the data model or, or make add-ons. Application servers in uh, enterprise GIS, uh, map APIs, data APIs, geoprocessing services, web map applications. Uh, you can describe internal services to implement and then also describe external services, which you are going to provide or using. And also, if you think about that your, your processes are dependent of external APIs, you have to make the vulnerability analysis 
what, what happens if those APIs are not available. If your business process will stop because you don't get the geocoding services from somewhere and, and your commercial uh, merchant store will be stopped, it will be cost a lot of money for you guys or organization. User interface uh, layer in G Enterprise GIS, that's the most important in a way because the end users will see that nothing else. The other layers are just serving the, the, the layers or, or services. It could be a desktop application or, or web application or mobile application. But keep in mind that if you have only one user interface, it's not the enterprise GIS. In enterprise GIS, you have multiple different kind of user interfaces. Uh, of course, the discussion is if API is, is the user interface or not, depends who you ask. Developers seems that that's the best user interface. So the fast lane for enterprise GIS, describe the process, design the data layer, create data models, define the external data sources, design application server level, uh, internal and external API services, and design user interface. What tool to whom would do what? That's the, well, maybe the question. And then you have to iterate this two to three times. You can't do it like one workshop, two days, and then it's ready. You have to have some kind of calendar days or, or time to better understand what, how it goes on. And you have to communicate all the time for the, all the stakeholders, like a head of the organization, but also the end users, what you are going to do. If you are not communicating, there may be false expectations in the future. Phosphor G software, this is maybe a, not new for you guys, but my definition is like any GIS software with open source license is Phosphor G software. Of course, OSGO is giving some kind of insurance about the quality of, of software and, and the life cycle of the softwares. But you have to remember that choosing the right software is always a risky task. Uh, my recommendation is that it's better deploy some, some kind of proof of concepts and, and, and learn and, and, and discuss with the other users that how they use and what kind of problems they have. Every software has problems and challenges and, and bugs and, 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 and so on. So you have to think about what, what is the risk to, to, to take one software and implement your enterprise GIS on top of that. Usually we say that uh, open source GIS stack, it's not all the logos here, but uh, you see that there's a desktop mobile application, you have a GIS server database, and, and some kind of libraries. So when you do with the enterprises with Phos4G, uh, so if you describe the process, that's not anything related to the te technology. Whatever software, even the commercial softwares, you can use with the commercial so, uh, same processes or implement the same processes with dif different kind of technology stacks. Uh, design data model for your own data. Uh, only physical data model is like a technology dependent. My opinion is that the PostgreSQL, PostGIS is only the database what you can use in Phos4G uh, uh, world. And then you need to have a, some kind of uh, selection of the Phos4G job softwares for the application, desktop and mobile applications. Conceptual data model is the tool where you talk with the, the domain experts to better understand it, uh, what they mean about the terminology and what kind of features or attributes is related to the, those uh, areas. Uh, you see that the, my example is coming from the airport. I have a presentation on, on Friday about the, how to manage the airport data models and airport data. And if you have uh, traveling with the airline with uh, via Helsinki, it will be maybe interesting, but let's talk more on, on Friday about that. Logical data model is maybe not 
uh, discuss with the domain experts anymore. It's more like uh, start to have more information about the data types and relationships between those tables and so on. You can use Archimate or, or the database design tool for, for the de describing. Thank you. Uh, physical data models is then technical implementation and it's technology dependent. If you make a physical data model, you can't, uh, if you make it for PostGIS, you can't use it in the geo package and vice versa. PG modeler is the tool that we have been using quite, in quite many process, uh, projects. Application server, uh, what is your IT infrastructure? Windows, Linux, cloud services. Uh, on premises, you have a, a question about what kind of features do you need? APIs, uh, web maps, dashboards, geo stories. In desktop application, also what kind of uh, uh, IT infra uh, operating systems you have? Do you need editing environment, analysis tools, and don't underestimate the need of training and 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 learning curves of the people if you change the software from A to B. Mobile applications, we viewing data in the field is different than editing data in the field or data collection in the field is a little bit different. Is it using ad hoc or is it like some kind of a part of the process, what they do there? Uh, online and offline usage, teleoperators usually say that it works all, everywhere, but if you go to in the field, it doesn't work anymore. What you do there, that's ideas. Some of the force are, are 4G architectures. This is like small municipality. Uh, they have a raster data as a files, and then they have a vector data in the PostGIS, then uh, application server level with the uh, GUI server, APIs, and then list map to create web maps. Usually, mainly the users are the internal usage of the municipality are using the web maps, but then GIS analyst is using GUIS. Other municipality ha want to have uh, external usage also, so we uh, create some kind of uh, separate environment for external stakeholder usage. We just copy the data in the data storage layer from uh, some raster files and, and some part of the vector data is copied to the other server and then we have a, uh, APIs in internal usage and also the, for the external usage. Uh, then a little bit uh, for the uh, private company implementation, Amazon Web Services, where they have a huge data warehouses uh, where we make uh, uh, data integration to Amazon RDS, which is basically PostgreSQL as, but, uh, as a SaaS software as a service by the Amazon. Then we have application servers, uh, MapStore and GeoServer on the virtual servers, but we also give the APIs to the different kind of application, what they had, have in Amazon. And business process uh, experts are just using the web user interface, but the GIS analytics want to use good GIS to implement the, their more specific uh, business analysis or geospatial analysis. So enterprise GIS with FOS4G, it's affordable solution for all size of organization. It's not free, but it, uh, it's open. Uh, freedom of action and digital sovereignty is the key factors when you choose the FOS4G. You make the decision how to use the software. You can avoid the vendor lock, but also uh, uh, manage the costs, how much you pay this year or how much you pay next year. Uh, code is law. Uh, have fun. And thank you that you are already part of the FOS4G community. <laughs> Many thanks. Uh, so, do we have any questions here in the room? Thank you for a great presentation there. So, I remember uh, close to about seven years working in the bank, uh, building the enterprise GIS. I think uh, a lot of the uh, 
you know, your, your point that, you know, the uh, stakeholders really kind of, you need the champions to support the initiative. And that's one of our struggles here. So, uh, what can you comment on? Uh, because we started off with, with FOSS, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, it's very difficult to get into IT because of the vulnerabilities, uh, you know, they don't approve some of the dependencies, right? And also, uh, it's really hard. You got so many menus, just like you go to a restaurant, you just want to eat lunch, but you get so many menus that you don't want uh, to spend so much time picking which one you're going to go through. So unlike, you know, I'm not selling here commercial GIS, mm. you know what I'm talking about, but they made it simpler that you already have the orchestrated, you know, deployment, right? You've got all the components ready. But for FOSS, it's hard to say, okay, you have a QGIS, but how about the application and the UI components that you have to pick through? Uh, my point is, you know, it's hard to sell to the stakeholders because you couldn't get them to the wow factor quickly mm. because you lack the tooling and the components ready to make those POCs or purple concepts quickly. Uh, yeah, it's... It's not an easy thing, I will say. Um, I think the discussion about the open source have changed in, 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 in the in last five years, that the, also the stakeholders understand that it's not something which is very bad, that, that you can't do it. Uh, geospatial is more difficult to sell than the f open source for the stakeholders, in my opinion. That, that when you then, if they understand what is the geospatial information and how to use that in the business processes, then it doesn't really matter what is the tool, what, how they will implement. Problem with the FOS4G that you have so many choices that how to implement. If we talk about you need WMS service, what do you do? Geo server, map server, GIS server, you have so so many choices, but somebody have to make the decision. And if it's if if you if you don't have enough to experts, there's a consulting companies like us and others who can help you. But also, I want to always uh, say it for the end user or customers that tell that you are using open source software because somebody else want to use that as an example. If you are using open source software, please tell in, in a way that we are using because some other people can use that as a tool for selling the open source software for them. Thank you for the question. Yes, thank you, Pekka. I'm Antti Vasanen from Regional Council of Southwest Finland. Uh, this is very neat and tidy, as you put it here. <laughs> uh, but uh, how do you cope with or manage the resistance of change which may appear when you start the process from commercial GIS to open source of phosphate G? Yeah, well, in the same way that you, you manage to risk to implement whatever technology you have. It's, it's, I, I don't see any kind of differences between commercial software and an open source software in, in, in a way when you implement it as a technology, you have both have a risk that the software is going away or, or uh, commerce, in commercial uh, software, the company goes to bankruptcy or they, de they define that we don't anymore support it, this version or something like that. You have the same kind of risks. Uh, I mean, nobody can take the risk from you. You have to manage as a user of the of the software in your organization. That's my yeah. And from end of view, end user point of view, that's true. But you often have to uh, sort of uh, make the management to believe. For it, yes. Well. Of yeah. Uh, to how to how to handle the management to believe that is maybe that you can sell the old ways that that you avoid the vendor lock. We can have multiple choices of vendors for consultation, training, and so on. Because the open source, FOS4G market is open for everybody. Everybody can establish the company and give the services. But in the commercial software, there's only one company who owns the co 
commercial software, and they are only provider of the, of the services. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I was wondering about the interoperability. You sketched a few solutions up, yeah. which are kind of like a, the, the bare minimum you have to do. But apart from that, how much custom development do you have to do to make sure that if you choose a map server, mm. so sometimes you're locked if you use GeoNode, you have to use GeoServer, or you mm. should use mm. GeoServer, but mm. how much custom development has to happen to make these tools to be interoperable? Um. I usually uh, try to say to the customers that we don't want to make custom code for you because it will cost you 10 times more to maintain the uh, custom code than that something else. So first thing is that I usually ask that if, if, if there's need from custom code for the customer, I ask that, is this specific for you? Can we can have this feature or this possibility in the core software? And then we try to convince them that we have to talk with the developers of the Phosphor-G software that they will add the feature in the core software. Because then you are, you are not maintaining anymore the code. Somebody else or you will take care about that. Then we talk about that if, if this is only specific for you, could, could it be some kind of extension and somebody else can also use, like GoodGIS, if it's a GoodGIS extension, which do this, and then maybe there's others who want to use it, and then there's a, some kind of community use that. And the final step is that if it's only specific your organization for this business process, they probably are ready to pay the amount of the money, how, how much it takes to make customized solution and then uh, maintain that for next 10, 20 years, what is the lifetime of the system. No easy answers, I will say. <laughs> okay, more, more questions still? Any other questions? Okay, so okay. many thanks. Many thanks for those words and uh, talking uh, also about there architecture. Is, uh, there is still one. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I want, because you said about external data sources, and yes. I often see that sharing data across stakeholders sometimes becomes difficult. Mm. So I wonder how you deal with that process. Um, well, well, it depends what kind of the data they are willing to have. I mean, uh, we have a customer who want to really collect some kind of information by themselves because they didn't trust the data provider or something like that. But when we analyze how much it will cost and maintain the data set in, a, in the next 10 years, they decided that it's not a way to do it. Uh, one example in, in Finland is the Helsinki region uh, uh, public transportation. They have 40 municipalities and they get the access for the municipality data. But they might make the, their journey planner system, they decided that it's, it will cost more to integrate the data so, uh, sources from the 14 municipalities, and they think about the open street is better solution for them. So now they are only totally related on the open source, not the municipality data, because the integration of those municipality data sets will cost more than the risk of the balancing of the risk, of course, the open street map, who will maintain that than if there's vandalism or something like that. But you have to always balancing issues. One last question. Yep. Uh, um, I was wondering about the what, do you, how, what, do, what are your thoughts about uh, moving data, like motion of data, data ingestion, and data pipelines? I feel, do you feel like the open source community is mature enough? Because there were a few projects, like uh, Tallinn Geospatial, and there were Geocattle, mm. but some of these ETL tools sort of disappeared, as I feel? Uh, well, it's uh, then, yeah, it's very, uh, I usually see that the geospatial data sets are not, uh, uh, how do I say that? It's bad when they are 
streaming this <laughs> live, so I have to think what I'm saying that I'm not saying what I'm thinking. Um, um, maybe we can discuss this later on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch.